Welcome to the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Ryan Van Fleet. And welcome to the Good Karma Success Coach Podcast. I'm your host, Melinda Van Fleet. Well, it's April 4th, and we decided to still record our monthly podcast together. Yes. And we realize what's going on out there. And we try to think of a topic that has been pretty relevant for us lately. It keeps popping up that um, maybe it'll give you something else to think about. <laughs> so that's yeah. that's where our heads are at. But first, I'll let Ryan share his little funny story that he had for me when he came home today about the Circle K. Oh, my God, the Circle K this morning. So we have lived in the Keys now for over 10 years, and... We used to live right across from the Circle K and go there once or twice a day. And we still go there quite often, (laughs) sometimes once a day. So we pretty much know everyone in the Circle K. We've known who all the managers are. We've seen people come and go. What was that one guy that got arrested for being a peeping Tom in the bathroom? Oh, God, he put a camera. He put a camera camera in the girl's bathroom. (laughs) So we've been going in there talking to this guy. Early in the morning. Early in the morning for a couple of years, and he ended up sticking a camera in the girl's bathroom and trying to take (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And they busted him. I guess he's been doing it for a while. <laughs> Needless to say, he does not work there anymore. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so there's always some like drama at the Circle K. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's drama everywhere, but oh yeah. my god, this seems that. So Ryan goes to the Circle K today to get some ice, and what it was new at the Circle K? Oh, they had a like a plexiglass shield. They had a plexiglass shield at the register, which is actually really smart, and. It would be great if a lot of people that are really out there still working and providing goods and services for the bulk of everybody else to be protected. So I think that is a great idea that they did that for their team. But what did you say to her? I told her that I needed one for my house for right because we have our office together and I need to put like one like between our desks. Yeah. Between Melinda and I. I, I, I said I need one of these to protect me from my wife. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? <laughs> and needless to say, she knows who I am. So, <laughs> so that's that's a little bit of our life, and um, I'm sure many couples out there and families have their own stories of togetherness, as Ryan likes to call it. Together, yep, togetherness. togetherness. We have a lot of togetherness time, <laughs> but we've always had a lot of togetherness time. So it's really not. That different, except for the fact that I'm not traveling, because normally I do travel a couple days a week. Yeah, so. everybody always asked me what I what I do when it was really windy. I was like, well, I kind of I, I I stay home and I work, and it was like, oh man, that's got to be really boring. And I was like, no, actually, it's pretty. You're, I'm pretty busy, so this is this is just a really long stretch of wind yeah. for me. <gasps> So yeah, we're not people that really sit and watch TV for hours. We never have been. So yeah. we've been. I don't play video games. No video games in this house. I don't even own a. Yeah. I haven't played a video game since the eighties. Yeah. So you know, once in a, a couple of nights a week, we'll watch a program on TV. So Ozark on Netflix is our go-to at the moment. Yeah, Ozark's on Netflix. And we'll watch like two or three. But maybe that's only like two or three nights a week because yeah. the other nights. I mean, honestly, we have so much content that we are producing and a huge to-do list of all these things that we have been wanting to do forever. So we're really maximizing that. Plus, you know, there's always something for me to clean around here. So (laughs) that doesn't stop either. And we have a big yard. So all of those things. But what the topic that I thought would be fun to discuss with Ryan today, because like I said, it keeps popping up. It popped up this past week when I was being interviewed for a podcast because called Becoming Entrified, and that podcast will be airing April 16th. Um, There's two guys that do that podcast, Patrick and Jeff, and it was a really fun podcast to be interviewed for, and we ended up talking about confidence. And Jeff, after I shared my story, they Jeff was like, wow, how are you so confident? And I've never really given it much thought before. And with in, in regards to Ryan and some things that he's working on and some ideas and some content, 
the word confidence keeps popping up for him as well. So it's kind of an interesting thing when you think about it. We don't go around going, oh, I'm so confident, because honestly, to me, that's kind of arrogant. Um, we just do. Like, we don't really think about it. We just keep going, and we just keep doing. So how would you describe confidence, Ryan? And it's, confidence has always been something kind of um, has been over the years – has been interesting for me as far as because it's nobody really even taught you know I mean growing up playing sports and stuff but it was like nobody it's something that you can't teach somebody so I think that the for me for what I do and it's one thing that I have taught what I'm teaching is is that confidence for me is able is being able to make sound decisions confidence in what I do on the water as far as what I do every day and what I decide to do and that just goes into analyzing situations and making changes and being confident in those changes so to me that's what confidence is similar to a professional athlete you know you look at a a quarterback in the NFL and I don't want not I don't watch much NFL anymore but just look at a quarterback, okay? And he's able to tune everything out, everything out around him with all that chaos and still find a dude to throw the ball to or find a little hole to run through out of all those guys getting a crap beat out of them. So it's similar to like being on the water. It's a big ocean, and you got so many things, variables out there. So the, what I teach for me – what I've learned is that I'm able to, for me, it's just confidence to me is being able to make the right decisions on the water and using all the variables around me to make those decisions. So, which has taken many years, right? many so, years, so many that's, years. That's where my head goes to when I started thinking about it more is all the practice, all the work, all the mistakes, yep, all lots the of mistakes. reps. Lots of mistakes. We're older. Not yep. that we're old, but we're yep. not 20. Right. All of those things combined over the years, trial and error, all of those things are what builds confidence. Right. Uh, it's you can't just, just buy a manual or a book and go, oh, okay, right. now I'm confident. Like, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. You have to be doing something, whatever your dream is or your passion or your job, a hobby. If you are a fisherman and it's a hobby for you, it's that practice. It's that resilience that maybe you have every weekend that you go out to wherever you go fishing, just like Ryan used to do when we lived in Minneapolis or when he lived in Wisconsin or Moline. And he practiced and practiced and practiced and he got more confident as he started winning. As yep. he started catching the fish. Yep. And then the you, for me, it was like little wins along the way. Little wins. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden something would click in your brain. And that's just how it went. And then once you mastered one thing, then you have to move. And I think a lot of people, I see their comfort level. They get so comfortable with doing one thing out of the water is that they miss out on all the other stuff that they can learn. And you get like, what's that? You get what's that word for it? Um, comfortable. You get yeah. Did you, you get, say yeah? Comfortable. You get comfortable with a guy going out there and just yellowtail fishing every day. And for me, I. And that's a lot of captains out here. A lot of captains. Yeah. They have like their thing. Their thing. Yep. And that's all they do. And that's all they do. Yep. And that's fine. I that's mean, that's fine. their lane, and yeah, that's great. Lane. Your lane that's is great. not that lane, and yeah. that's good too. Yeah. So. Guys are just sword fish now, and that's all they do. Yeah. Um, honestly, I get really bored. I, I like to do different things and I, try different things. and try different things, and and that just that's just how my mind works. So, and that's how you get better. And, and sometimes they work. Yeah, sometimes they work. Today, for example, I I had some trial and error stuff with a downrigger, uh, trying some new stuff with a downrigger, and I had a major win today. I've got some slight modifications that I have to do, but I like I figured something out that's like that's that was really good. 
So that's going to up my from where I'm at right now with my downrigger fishing. So, but it's the Oahu season, and I'm I'm for and for me, I'm kind of happy with that because I'm like burnt out on it. Really, I'm ready to move on to different fish, and it's just a it's it's for me that I, I want to go do some dolphin fishing. I want to get back to doing, I'm doing a lot of mutton fishing. I just don't get like in one lane and do one type of fishing. Cause that in the end, that's going to, if you want to get better, that's going to hurt you by doing the same thing every day. So especially in the fishing guide business. Yeah. So, so the practice, the small steps over time, Owning your failures and your mistakes and treating them as just learning experiences because that's all they are. So you never come home beating yourself up that you tried something and it didn't work. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're like, hey, I got to fine tune this. I got to figure it out. Yep. And you go back and fine tune it. I was walking the dogs the other morning. I think it was yesterday morning because I was thinking about this topic and just getting my thoughts around um, some stories. And I remember several summers ago, it might have been like three or four years when you took that summer and you took that summer and said to me, you were going to figure out how to mutton fish. I didn't even know what a mutton was. <laughs> yep. And every day that you had is a free day. You did that and you said, don't kill me because I'm going to be spending some money on gas. And, you know, what, what do you use? some bait, yeah. live bait, whatever yeah, you bait. use, you pay all that much attention. But yeah. And it took you how many months? It took a long time. It took almost, uh, it took me almost a year and a half. To master it. To master it. And I have it mastered. That's the one thing I, and now I'm like, I've been, it, I, I can honestly say I have it mastered. Mm -hmm. And it's for me to say that, it's not ego. It, it was a lot of hard work and I put into it and it just, uh, yeah. I, was, I have it mastered. Yeah. So I know when to go, when not to go, when not to fight it. it. There's more to just catching the fish. So catching the fish is the easy part. But you've built your confidence up over time with the practice. You didn't inherit that from somebody. No one taught you how right. to do it. You figured it out on your own. Yep. How to fish for mutton. And you built that up over time. And now you're confident and you can confident you say without being arrogant that you've mastered must mutton fishing. That's which, correct. Yeah. That's amazing. So that, and then Ryan, knowing Ryan, he's always on to the next thing, which yeah. is I'm on, to, I'm on to the next thing. But you focused on that, which I think is another thing. You focused on that. Yeah. And what I think is interesting, I was reading a book and, you know, people that are, you know, coaches or entrepreneurs or anyone in the space are always like, focus, 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 focus. And that's true. And it's hard to sometimes do it like 100% focus unless you're maybe independently wealthy and you can just sit and podcast all day or something like that. I mean, we have businesses to run. So we like to podcast, but it's not like our main thing. And I'm just using that as an example. And when you focus, you put energy behind it. So the energy of the universe is conspiring with you to help you move to your goal faster. And that's something to definitely consider that isn't said aloud that often. Like I said, I just, I read it in a book. I knew it innately. Some people dance around it, but that is something that you have to think about is when you focus, the energy of the universe is conspiring to help you get to your goal faster so whenever you can if you have a serious goal that you're working on focus on that so you can move faster along the other thing that I wanted to mention was that as you get more confident you also get more confident in drawing boundaries boundaries around people Boundaries yeah. around what you want to do, boundaries around standing up for yourself, boundaries around structuring your day and what you want to spend time on and not spend time on. And I think that's just an interesting way to think about confidence as well. So this past week, well, actually these past two weeks, now that I've had more time on my hands because I'm not on the road selling, I'm home. 
I've kind of let my schedule get out of hand and I had to reel it back in and set some boundaries around my time and be like, no, I'm only doing interviews and webinars and courses and Zoom calls on these couple days a week. Last week, I realized I had three nights in a row that I was on some type of Zoom call. And I go to bed at eight (laughs) o'clock. So that kind of crushed me in my routine. So when you get confident and you know that, hey, this is how my day needs to be structured, then you feel more confident in setting the boundaries around that to make that happen. So that's just a little tip in a hindsight, because right now the majority of people have, you know, a different work life going on, a different home life going on, that they might not be going to their nine to five job like normal. And they might be home and you might be in a household where you're at home and look at your day and see what's going on with your day and figure out how you can best structure it. So you're productive, you don't get lazy or depressed or wonder where your day went because gosh, think about it, how fast the days go. Yeah. (laughs) They go by really quick. You know, and then set boundaries around that and even set boundaries around people that are time sucking you. That's like the worst is people that suck your time and you don't, you don't need that. Try, try to stay the course, try to put together a, a plan for your day, a plan for your week, things you definitely know you want to accomplish. And believe me, you'll feel so much better about it that you have accomplished something for the day, for the week, whatever your goals are for us. We have some, obviously some daily goals that we try to do. Like even though Ryan Um, went and did his own thing today. We still wanted to get our podcast done. So we're doing it on a Saturday night, which isn't our normal thing, but we're doing it because we're still accomplishing this goal for the day versus sitting and like just watching TV or something. So what's your thoughts on boundaries? Boundaries. I don't even know where to even start. I maybe probably shouldn't talk about it. (laughs) (laughs) So Ryan's been really trying to make sure that people are clear on his boundaries. So I would suggest that anyone that doesn't understand what I'm talking about in regards to boundaries and Captain Ryan's time to listen to his last podcast, because he does talk about his time and people and how their behaviors have been. And he's going to stick to it. So if you think you're going to get in the back door when there's a private Facebook group where he has private coaching, he has tons and tons of content out there, like it's not happening. So, and I'm telling you myself. So listen up and stay within the boundaries. And that's for all of us so we can manage our days and be productive and continue to produce great content. For you guys. He's got a lot going on, a lot on the cooker, and um, we're really excited about all that, but he's going to be staying within his boundaries that he has put out there. So what's coming up on Tuesday? It's your birthday. It's my birthday! <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go try to go fishing. And we're going to try to go fishing. We're going to try. <laughs> we're going to try. No, what is Yoda? Yoda says, look at right in front of us. Oh, yes. Right in front of us. <laughs> do, do or do not. There is, there no, is try. no try. Yes. There is no try. So I'm going to be 49. Can you believe it? 49. 49. I'm always going to be 20. (laughs) In your mind. (laughs) And for years and years and years, probably until maybe last spring, I was hiding my age. I don't know why. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. But you know what? I'm a freaking proud 49-year-old. I don't even know how old I am. You're a year and a half younger than me. Yeah. (laughs) So maybe that's why when Jeff was asking about my confidence, you know what? I'm going to be 49 and I've lived an amazing life. I have more stories than I could probably ever have time to share with the general public and life lessons. And you know what? I'm pretty proud of that. And I'm pretty proud of 
hanging out with you. <laughs> yeah. Even though you want plexi between us. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you guys know how to make a plexi, plexiglass. <laughs> Maybe he wants to hide in my car and listen to the radio. <laughs> the silence of the lamps. <laughs> oh, my God. That's crazy. So on that note, I think we should end <laughs> Oh, my God. That's too funny. <laughs> so thank you for listening. We really appreciate it. Please follow us on Instagram and also you can find me on LinkedIn and we definitely want to make sure that everyone is staying safe and healthy. That's the biggest thing. So thank yeah. you. Make sure you guys are staying safe, staying busy, practice those knots so I don't have to hear, well, can I do it this way? <laughs> so can I do it this way? Guys, anybody that tells me you can't, can't, yeah, can't I do it this way, that's the cheater way. <laughs> so Anyways, okay. Get confident in those knots. Get confident people. in the knots. All right, we're out of here. Anytime you're fishing, it's all good, guys. Thanks for listening. <laughs>